Hello, one. Hello. Welcome well, to another live. Welcome to live number 42. 42. We don't have Matt today, so we are speaking and controlling all this technology. I'm not controlling anything. You're doing all the controlling. I'm controlling. <laughs> and you're doing the talking. That's it. So That's let's it. Uh, give it a few seconds. Quite a few of you online already. Mm, good um, stuff. And uh, if you don't mind to drop a message to let us know that is everything uh, clear, they can hear us. Looks like Tony's there. Hello, Tony. So today, what are we going to talk about today? We're still making a plan, I think. Well, we've got a bit of everything. We've got lots of yeah, stuff Yeah, yeah. So we've got our car. Yes. The guest car. Very special today. It is quite nice. I like this stuff. Definitely. And then we've got a, a bit of um, a tutorial for yes. trains. We've got Marlin coming in. Yes, we've got Marlin with the train tutorial. We've got some RC stuff. Yes, I've got some plastic kits, plastic kits, and some airbrush accessories. Absolutely. A bit and of then, a... yeah, and then obviously we've got another live that's coming up. So it's the first yes. time we've had two lives in a day. Two lives in a day. So yes. last weekend we actually raced uh, at Kilo Park. Yes. We do a quick report on it. So yes. So one tenth of road buggies. So there was a pro am. Uh, was the event was called pro am. Yep. Uh, it was sponsored by uh, Yoko Moore and Hearns. Yep. And it was a really good event. Unfortunately, Saturday morning was a bit wet. But it got a lot better towards the afternoon and the well, Sunday. Was up, didn't it? it was brilliant. Absolutely. What I really liked was the uh, the concept of the pro am side of it. So Definitely. it was a, a professional driver yes. that had to team up with an amateur driver, and it was points related. Absolutely. And yeah. they were racing in the same race. Yes. So so you had really fast driver and some slower ones yes. together. So there was a challenge of uh, starting in the back of the pack and actually overtaking, which yes. is which is always a bit of a challenge. Mm. Um, and so. Very good event, very well run, um, and so good event all in all. So I had fun. And then this afternoon, yes. after this live, we're going to talk to Nicholas Lee from yes. Yakima uh, about the BD10. Mm. So if you're into uh, RC racing and on-road specifically, jump online uh, again at 4 p.m. Yes. And we're going to have a probably another hour-long live mm. with, uh, with Nico. So that will yeah. be good. So there'll be a lot of info. Get to learn about... Um, Nico and what he's all about and how his racing goes. Um, and then we'll discover all the difference uh, of the new car. That's right. And um, how they make it go faster. And, and perhaps you're going to learn a bit more about, about him and, mm. and even how they developed the car. You know, I've yes. always been interested to know how do you go from the 2020 model and, and what you start doing to bring it to the mm. 2021 and then yes. next year we 2022 and so forth. Mm. So what do, they, what, what do they try and how do they decide that these parts are going to be part of the new kit? So. Yes. Will be a very interesting, mm. interesting um, chat. Yeah, behind the scenes. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. So, uh, Barry is asking a question. Sure. Uh, do you sell micro springs? Um, micro springs. So you mean micro springs is in just really tiny springs, or for a micro ready control car? Car. That's right. So we got some tiny, smallish springs for uh, the smaller ready control cars and like some, scale. Yeah, and perhaps yep. some. Um, uh, some for the um, for the gas mechanism of the one eight buggies. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the return spring. That's right. The return yes. springs. Yes. Yep. So, so those are quite tiny. Hmm. Um, so maybe something like that can work. This depends on what you need it for. That's right. So yeah. perhaps drop us a message on Facebook. Hmm. Uh, since you're listed on, on Facebook, and then or with some dimensions, so we can have a look and send you some photos. Yeah. So hmm. Nick is uh, wishing us a Easter. A Easter to you, Nick. Good to see you online. It's been a while, isn't it? Absolutely. Nick? So. All right, let's get started to guess this car today. Okay, what is this? this car? Okay, so like normal, we need the manufacturer of it. That's it. We need the uh, the model of this particular car. Uh, I guess we're adding a few other things, you know. So who is the uh, major sponsor? That's right. Um, and who's the driver? Do we have the name there? Oh, it should be there. Oh, there is a name yeah, in there. Sorry, yeah. I didn't say it all. Should be. I don't know. We I can't see that, but I'm just making need, it up. We're going to do some uh, magnifier there. Oh, we got the numbers on it, so they the must be. So yeah. Should be good. Yeah. Should be good. So, very iconic car. Mm. We just see this week, brand new. Yes, yeah, be good fun. So. Perfect. So, what do we start with? Should we start with new kits or airbrushing? Airbrushing, I think that would be. Want to do airbrushing? Yeah, let's let's talk about some airbrushes. We've okay. done quite a few tutorial after on, we on have. YouTube. Yeah. So airbrushing is um, it's it's one of those um tools I guess which are readily available now and not particularly expensive. Uh, you get yourself a, a decent setup for. Yeah. Hundred dollars. That's right. Um, but there's other these these little accessories that always make uh, using the airbrush easier. So we've got mm -hmm. a whole heap of in. I've got a few things here. I'd like to show you. Definitely. All right. So first thing I do, I just bring in the airbrush itself. All right. So let's just 
pop all these bits and pieces over here and I'll explain what they're useful. Absolutely. All right. So what are we doing? All right, so I've got my airbrush here. So that's our nine steps signature classic airbrush. 0.3 millimeter nozzle. It's quite a standard type airbrush and it's one of our uh, most popular ones. So once you've got that, handy thing to have from here would be a holder. Okay, so we've got one of these. Okay, so this is a particular style which clamps onto the bench top. We also have the freestanding ones as yes. well, which I had for a while. Now the advantage of this particular one is I get this smaller, um, and because you've got it on the side of your bench top, it's um, it keeps your uh, airbrush very close at hand. Only thing is, it's going to be permanent on the bench top, so you need to put it in a place where it's going to stay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just undo it a bit more, and just just go on your tablet like that. Okay. Pretty simple, isn't it? So, your airbrush just sits inside, just like that. Okay, so we can spin it around. Yeah. All right, definitely. so it's, it's always very handy. Definitely. Because if you have a couple of airbrushes, if you're doing two different colors or multiple yep. colors, it's always handy to have a good place to put it down, pick yep. up the other one, and then switch. That's right. And particularly when you're refilling the cup as well. Yes. Because rather than trying to hold all this and just filling it up with yep. two hands. Yeah, true. Yeah, you got it there, and it's ready to go. Yes. Okay. So that's a holder, very handy. Next thing I'm going to talk about is the filter. Okay, so this is a uh, water trap and uh, dust filter. Now, quite often you'll have um, the regulator with it all built in at the compressor end. Issue with that is sometimes you can still get condensation created in the uh, actual line. So this particular one actually screws on the base of your airbrush. Let's see if you've got on the top camera, maybe it's better. Yep. Here we go. So you can just see it there. Let's move some of these things out of the way. Okay, so you see it's just easily screwed on here. So it just goes in between the, the end of your airbrush and your hose here. So you've got this clear bulb, which um, helps you see if there's any condensation inside. Uh, and then you see the, uh, the bronze color in the middle here. That's a scented uh, filter to trap any dust. And if you do get liquid inside, it's just a matter of pressing the valve, which is on the bottom here, and that releases it all. Yep. And that's it. So that's really handy, particularly on a really humid day, because sometimes that's if right. you're... If you're spraying a lot, you can't tell that there's condensation slowly building in the uh, the line, and it'll just pop out of here. But that'll catch everything. So if you've got that all together, that'll be absolutely complete. Okay, so we'll take that off. Next thing to consider would be a quick release. Okay, so a quick release, just same sort of thing as a filter. You get you have this on the end of the filter as well. I'll leave it off there so it's a bit easier to see what it does. So the airline goes on the bottom here. And then, just for example, you want to uh, take off your airbrush for quick cleaning. Um, normally, if you undid the uh, the hose from here, all the air will be coming out of the hose. So you have to switch off the uh, the compressor, or if it's got a tank, you need to deplete. But with a quick release, you just um, pull down to release the valve. Comes off separately like this. Okay, so you've got your hose still connected to the end, and then you've got your airbrush, which is easy to clean. Now the valve here is actually stopping the air from uh, escaping. Yes. So you can keep all your uh, compressor on or your um, tank all charged up. And then when you've done that, you just press it back on, you're ready to go in. So that's quite handy. All right. So from there, we'll move on to something a bit different here. You can get one of these larger handles. Okay. So the idea of this particular grip is it gives you uh, a larger surface area here to hold onto. So I'll just quickly put it on. So what you've got here is you've got a extension adapter that goes through the grip. So it goes on first. And then this goes through here, I think. Do I do it all wrong? Oh, I've done it all wrong. Go the other way. You go the other way to hold it all together. All right. Let's go in. Yeah. Yep. And then this. You got no. the other one. Sorry, you said the other one there. Oh. That's the extension. That's the, yeah. There you go. Silly That's me. It. Just go the way. Now, you make sure you get the right adapter, which is this one, and then it slides in. Like that. That's it. Yep. And then you do the rest of it over here. Okay, so you've got a grip like this. So it feels more like a uh, uh, an air gun. You hold it like this, and then you're, you've got a grip here between the thumb, and then also for the fingers. And then you use a th your finger like this. So something as an option to try out. 
if you prefer. I mean, I guess if you're spraying for a long time, you can get really tired. So that's very handy to have. All right, so that's the accessories for the gun itself. Now, if you need um, replacements, we do have replacement nozzles. So that's a nozzle which is in the tip here. And then also the needles, which is in this protective case here. Because those are the parts that are mainly wearing. That you can and, bend. Yep, or bend and, yeah, if you drop it and such. Now, after that, we've got this one here. This is the, uh, the larger type regulator and uh, water trap. Okay, so here you've got your pressure meter here. And then this is how you adjust uh, the air. So just lift it up, rotate this to change the pressure, press back down, and the lock locks in place. And then this is like that smaller filter as well. So you've got a large area here for trapping all the, uh, the condensation. And then also the air trap there, and then you press it up to release as well. So there we go. I think we've gone through. So they're all the um, airbrush accessories. That's right. Really handy. The different double needles for the, yes. for the premium airbrush. We've got yes, the option right. of, um, of the... Two mil, so point, point two, two mil and yes. a point three mil. That's so right. Yeah, there's a bit of flexibility there. Mm. So definitely a few options there. So. Yeah. So very good, good stuff. So all right, let's put it away. Yes. Bill, we're not going to airbrush anything today. No, not today. Okay. So as we talk about plastic kits, yes. uh, we just received an interesting delivery of a brand called Asuka. Asuka. So. Should we have a look? We should. Let's have a look. So Asuka is a, um, a Japanese brand. They, they have a um, quite an interest in Shermans. And so here you go, the whole range of different Shermans. Wow. And some accessories. So how about we just pop up some of these. Now, you probably don't know, but Shermans, it wasn't just one type of Sherman. There were lots of different variations. So there were um, the American ones, and then there were different British type ones. And then they they changed as they went throughout the war as well. So this particular one here, that's the Firefly. Whoops, almost lost it. So that's a British type um, Sherman. So what they did was they mounted a 17 pound British gun right. onto it, and it actually had the, uh, uh, the firepower to defeat some of the, uh, the German tanks. And that's something that the um, the Allies lacked for a while. Uh, suitable weaponry to actually fight. Yeah. So this particular one is the Jumbo, I think. Is that the Jumbo? No, maybe not. That's the uh, M4A3. So this one was quite common throughout the, the middle of the war. Uh, we've got another Sherman Mark III, British version. Okay, with a small gun. So all these have slight variations in the hull. And also the turret. Yeah, some had cast turrets. Other ones had um, um, boarded turrets. Uh, we've got a, another Firefly here. So Fireflies being the uh, British uh, variant. And um, these were quite um, uh, reliable tanks. And the troops were very happy when they saw Fireflies coming because right. they knew that it was going to be effective against the enemy. And then the very latest release is. This one. Okay, so this one was released as the um, uh, anniversary for Battle of the Bulge, so in the Ardennes. And this one actually comes complete with um, Tamir figures. <laughs> right, I can see that, yeah. Yeah. So very nice. So there's a whole heap of different um, Sherman. Shermans, uh, whatever type you like. Some people only build Shermans. Looks like this one here also does come with extra crates it does. and an extra part. So, it does. so let me see if I jump on this camera so you guys can have a look from that side. Yeah. Um, this chair in particular um, have, uh, this one's got some crates up here Yep. and some, uh, I think, sleeping bags and yep. helmets. Yeah. And kind of kind of luggage type. Yeah. So these are really nice ones. These are made by Value yep. Gear. Yep. So they're included. And in this case here, we have, I guess, some armaments, really, and some uh, photo edge parts for the look of it yes. up here. And then the cupola there is actually oh. molded in clear so that you can uh, just mask off the clear bits and you get the periscope look. Wow. Yeah, very nice. And then finally, they've got some really nice machine gun accessories. Now, you probably yes. you probably wouldn't. Just little packets like so. A bit hard to see from that sort of distance and probably a bit hard to show you here as well. Yeah. But um, these are uh, 50 caliber machine guns and 30 caliber machine guns. And they're molded so that you can lay them out. Uh, they look like they're dismantled. 
So you actually got the barrel separately and they got the full length barrel and they slide into the um, uh, the main um, body of the uh, the machine gun uh, so that it really feels like you're building the, the real thing. So it's super detailed, very crisp. Um, quite often people would buy these to supplement a, a different um, kit. So you've also got ammo boxes. Now we've got three of them here. So we've got two different types of um, 50 cal. The main difference is the gun's the same, but it's got different um, mounts. And then we've also got the 30 cal as well. So these are quite oftenly uh, used on tanks, but it's also got the stands for infantry use. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, good good accessories there. But very nice, uh, very nice pack. Mm. Uh, good. It's good to sort of see some plastic kits. So that's a that's a good delivery. Something new. Something we yes. haven't had for a long time. Yeah, that's uh, right. good selection of Sherman. So if you have a project, you can decide exactly which Sherman you want to build. That's right. So, so whenever we get a super in, it always sells out very quickly. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Oh, on yeah. the new site, Tamir restock yes. is actually coming. So oh. apparently, uh, in the next probably week, week and a half, we should have a major restock of Tamir paints and Tamir kits. Yeah, so lots of back orders, paint. which we are hoping to fulfill very, very soon. But some good news. So Tamir is mm. uh, back up to speed by the sound of it. And yep. uh, there's lots of stock arriving. So this is the first drop, and then there will be a few other. Gonna drop in the, in the near future some paints and yes. kits. Kits. We haven't yeah, had many good. kits from Tamiya. No, that's right. In a long time. Mm. So let's see. Let's see what we're gonna get. But it should, yeah. be, it should be a lot. Yes. So. Oh, actually, some uh, fairly fresh news. Yes. For the last couple of days. Yes. New Dragon kit. Yes. Um, they're making a brand new Australian Bushmaster oh, kit. Oh, one, one second. One second. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So there's gonna be two versions. Yes. There's gonna be the Army and. Um, RWF version, yes, and then there's going to be an SAS version too with a bigger gun on it. That's right. Oh, yeah, wow. that's going to be yeah. good. I saw so, the exactly just the other day. Yeah, that's right. That's exciting because um, yeah. we haven't had the we used to have the 35th scale from um, Showcase. Yes, that Showcase. Model? Showcase. Yeah, yep. yeah. And uh, we haven't had that one for a very long no. time. Even that's, now, they're really hard to find. Very hard to find. So it's good to have something, uh, even though it's a smaller scale. Yes, something uh, like a Mush Master. Yes, in some some fashions. Yep. So mid year. Mid year. Very yep. good. Very good. So. We need to start guessing this car. Have we got any guesses yet? No, no, no guesses. guesses. No guesses yet. No. Oh, so, I would have thought this um would have been picked up pretty quickly because it's a fairly unique mm, shape. Very unique shape. Mm. So uh, I think we're waiting for Marlin to come in or Brett, one of the two. But meanwhile, let's see if we can start guessing this car. It's very, very special. It should be, even if it's a bit out of focus there, we should still be able to, to guess be able to what, it it could be, what it could be. Let's see. Normally, no, no takers. No yeah, takers yet. The way. No takers yet. So let's see what uh, what what could be. What did we have last week? Last week we had it. Was that the Ferrari? Was that a Ferrari? No. Yeah, it was one of these MR collectible. Yeah, it would be. Was it the Bugatti? Wait, that was a week ago. I don't remember. A, a week, week ago. Two weeks ago. So we had a Bugatti recently, which was sold just this morning. Actually, that didn't last very long. No, that beautiful that's right. Bugatti changed to the H. 110 in uh, in oh, that's right. 118 yes. scale resin and yes. this is coming from a different manufacturer but it's mm. a similar kind of um, resin model so yes let's see what uh, if anyone can guess no 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 guesses yet too hard isn't it uh, this, this, this we expected this to be an easy one oh well well, oh, well. Marling is arriving now so you guys have a few minutes to think about this oh it's got some new stuff to okay show us. so we receive a lot of things actually this week come here Marlin. Marlin. The stage is yours. And we got boxes of stuff. Okay. Lots of interesting things today. All right, I'll put this up here. Yeah, nice. All right. Well, so today we received yesterday a a big Kato restock that uh, we were waiting for a long time. So yeah, it's a lot of new stock. That's fine. Right. Um, and some new sets That's that right. we haven't had before too, which we're gonna have a look at in a minute. That's right. So we also see the, the also the, the train set without a tram. The tram the tra tra was a city set uh, with, you, with a tram. Uh, we? Carlo Unitram. Oh really? Tram. We, yes. have a, we have a yes. Unitram. It's a track set. Yes. So it has the road and the yep. sidewalk and everything yes. yep. with the tram tracks um like recessed into it. Yep. And um that's just designed um you need to get a power pack and the trams to run on it. But uh, they're coming out with a with a set with a tram included, and that would be a really great way to add on to that set. Right. So we're going to have to look at that in more detail once this, that arrives. So this set, yeah. you could actually put plugger on it and just drive Absolutely. them around. Yes. When he's come back, 
Plugger has gone missing in well. So. Yeah, Plugger went for a drive somewhere and then he came you, back. The news of this week is that Plugger went <laughs> missing and we are really looking for him again. Yeah, yeah, somewhere in Melbourne. Somewhere around, yes. yes. So it's been lost. So hopefully we're going to find him again and we can put it on their cater set. We yes. might have to put up, like, have you seen this tram? So That's I right. Yeah, all, I think you should do a sign. On the street. Yes. I think Warrior can produce a sign of, <laughs> have you seen Plugger and, and see where we can find. That's it. So what have you got for us? Well, I'll actually put this aside from now and we'll have a look at some Woodland Scenics products again this week. That's right. Uh, so I've been playing around with some plaster rock molds. Yep. Because I really was excited to see what they were like to use. Yes. Uh, so if you guys are unfamiliar with it, uh, it's it's these um, silicon molds and um, they're flexible, um, kind of they have baking yeah, molds, sort of similar to this. And the idea is that you can pour your plaster in, mm -hmm. unless it hardens, it's very easy to remove. Right. And the advantage of this is that you can make um, you know, rock castings over and over and over again quite yeah. efficiently. Well, I guess you would want to make quite a few, wouldn't you? Yeah. Generally? And there's a there's lots of different varieties, and this is just one example. There's probably about fifteen or more yeah, different, quite a few different, different rock yeah. molds available. Oh, so these are the long ones. There's also the short, yeah. stubby ones as well. Some big chunky ones. Yeah, it's all different kinds. Yeah. These are shelf rock, but there's right. also ones that are like massive rock face, where it's almost like just one on the entire mold. Oh, okay. Wow. Um, and then so we're gonna have a look at these. Actually, this is one of my earlier attempts. Right. At doing these plaster molds yeah, and right, um, nice getting. Texture. Yeah, it's, there's really a lot detailed, of detail. Actually. I'll see if, how close I can get that. So this is just bare plaster. And uh, we're going to have a look at making this a little bit more realistic. Uh, basically, Woodland Scenics does a, a quite a few different varieties of plaster. Yep. Uh, this is the Super Strength. This is what they recommend for um, plaster moldings. Yes. And uh, they there's probably about six different ones. And then they have information regarding uh, what you would use it for. So not all plasters are created equal. Some are a lot lighter than others, and they're great for when you're covering large areas of terrain yep. where weight would be an issue. Yep. In this case, strength is the most important factor, and maintaining that detail. So right. this is what they recommend for that. So this one's really dense. It looks dense. Yes. Yeah, this is looks particularly kind of, dense. It's actually one. quite heavy. Very heavy. Yeah. Right. Okay. So one really easy way to make this come to life is yep. with um, earth colors. Yep. These are pigment paints, so they're quite thin and watered down. Yep. And uh, we'll just quickly demonstrate what it's like using those. I just have these little sample bottles here. And we're just going to paint these up very quickly and, and show you guys what the results will look like. So we've got burnt umber. Let's put it in this one. Well, so these are straight out of the bottle like this? Straight out of the bottle. So right. very, very so watery. It's like, it's like a wash. It's very liquid, isn't it? Very liquid. Probably could have used a good shake up. Beforehand. Beforehand. So what I'll do is when I open up the yellow ochre, I'll actually do that first. Well, this way can that's a mix. pigment. I guess it's got uh, the, the powdered pigments in it, which give it the um, a little bit of a grainy finish. That's right. That came out much smoother. Yes, right. I definitely had a good shake it's up. Just give it a bit of a mix of this one. is actually yeah. pretty good too. And then okay. any kind of foam brush. I've just got these little foam brushes here. Yep. And really good to just spot the plaster so you don't want to cover the whole thing so you're just you... doing a random dab are you? yeah random dabs yep. leopard spotting is is sometimes what it's called too right and because it's the wash is nice and thin what yep. it will do is it will actually um travel to all of the recesses uh in the in the molding itself and highlight those areas it'll highlight all of the textures yeah so that's i'm going to say it's probably about 50 percent covered yep um, and then we'll do the same with this one too. And you could use different colored washes for different colored rocks, depending on the kind of geographic location that you're trying to recreate. So these could be like red rock if you're doing the desert, or they could be like a gray rock if you're doing like shale or something like that. Yep. Um, so that's about 50% with that one. That's, that's pretty quick, isn't it? Way. Yeah. It's very effective already. Yeah. It makes a big difference when you go from this, uh, from the white to this uh, kind of yellowish, you know, creamy color. It makes I'll probably put that on the tray. Way. Yeah, actually. And, um, okay. This will add um, just a nice contrast. So we're only using two colors. You could use a lot of other colors for this, and I think it's the the dark that really highlights it. But you want to put your light colors on first because yes. you can always make things darker. Yeah. But it's really hard to reverse that process if yeah. you've applied your darkest um, washes first. Yeah. Oh, because it's so transparent. That's that one, and we'll try 
this one. And all the and the gravity will pull this into all of the really um, recessed areas on the molding. You can just keep adding until you're happy with the way it looks. It's really, it's really, it's really effortless. Quite therapeutic, actually. It's quite therapeutic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you remember a couple of weeks ago, uh, we actually did a a, a bigger set. Mm. Remember, and that was yeah. uh, similar process. The rock was already made at the time. You just did some painting. Yeah, that's right. Um, we sort of went through and demonstrated how to do a little diorama, that's and th right. this was one aspect Stack. of it. But yeah. I really want to do the mold myself and yeah, yeah, that's right. see how that performs. So there, oh, look at that. That's, that's a really natural tone, isn't it? Very little effort, uh, very little time, um, and that's quite a big improvement over just bare, just bare um, plaster. Yep. And you can keep on going, um, yes. but so that we won't be here all day. I think. Yeah. I think that. Pretty well demonstrates how effective that is. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So Great. Al is asking um, how heavy and brittle are these um, these rocks really? So I, I would define they're quite heavy and they feel also quite brittle yeah. at the same time. So there's a good weight. Well, they, they are fairly brittle, um, and the brittleness will depend on what kind of plaster you That's use right. and how effectively you mixed your plaster, like the water um, to plaster ratio. Right. So to my knowledge, I think it's the more water you add, the weaker it is. Yeah, but that could be that could be the opposite. I have to yeah. double check. But uh, one one great way to sort of get randomization if you're stuck using the same rock mold over and over and over again. Yeah. So this is a big one. This is one that came out of a mold where it's pretty much just one Full. on the whole sheet. Yeah. And um, if if that if you're not happy with that, if if there's not enough randomization, you literally can break it apart, or you could drop it. From like a, a small height, and it comes and, and then let let a randomization um, happen. Yeah, let it happen, and that way you can you can get a lot more um, out of these molds by absolutely That's allowing good, them yeah. to become different shapes. It's still very crisp way it's come apart, so it doesn't doesn't just fall apart. That's right. So it's still got a, a rough edge, but it, it's still it's still easy to manipulate. Absolutely. But yeah. I would say treating it with the same level of care you treat a layout or a diorama, it's pretty durable. It would hold yep. up for quite a few years. Yeah. Yep. Well, I guess if you wanted this to last forever, you could probably coat it with something else, like yeah. you know, mm. like, yeah. like an epoxy. Yes. So how would you normally glue this onto your um, your base? Uh, you could use, um, so they, they do like a woodland scenics do a few different scenic glues. I'm not yep. entirely sure what would be the best one they'd recommend. Yep. You could even use plaster to help hold that in That's place. Right. You could, oh, yeah, you could sure. actually yeah. plaster that onto your layout. Yeah, and there's, right. um, there's one called Moldesine plaster, and it comes in a big tub like this. Yep. And that's designed specifically as like a gap filler yep. um, on scenery terrain. So that's what I would do is I'd seal it in with mm -hmm. that around the outside. And then when that dries, I'd smooth it, um, sand it out. Yep. And yeah, cover it with vegetation. I think Definitely. that's probably how I'd go about it. Beautiful. That wow. shows how easy it's actually to do this. Sounds very yeah. complicated when you're trying to explain yeah. it to someone, but in reality, it's actually really fast and easy to to produce a really good um, really good result. It's just yeah, it's just a matter of mixing your plaster, waiting a few hours, popping yeah. it out, and then waiting overnight for it to dry. That's early. right. And then you can you can, if you have a couple of these, you can almost have like that's an assembly line point. process going. That's right. There you go. See all different sizes, shapes. I guess you just put it together like that and just fill in, fill in the gaps. That's yeah. right. And then yeah, they'll, nice. they'll work for all scales. I mean, depending on whether you want this to be just a, like a relatively small That's boulder right. or if you want it to be like that would be like a massive rock face That's and right. end gauge. Yeah. Yeah, true. That. Yeah. Absolutely. So they're not really scale Let's specific. bring this up again here. Yeah. yeah. These do look really, really good actually now that they are finished. Because you compare that to the original yeah, one. Yeah, just straight white. There's a massive difference. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Well, I'll move these out of the way and yep. we'll talk about uh, one of the new sets we got from, from Cardo. Yes. That sort of excites me because um, I've got a, a bit of an emotional connection to that train. That bullet train? Yes. I think we've been on that train together. We have been on that train together, yes. actually. That's very true. Well, maybe that's a story oh, that you guys could tell us a little bit about. Oh, yes. <laughs> There you go, Shinkansen. So what is Shinkansen? I don't know, what is Shinkansen? Oh, Shinkansen. Shinkansen is a high-speed train. So a high-speed train that's um, uh, got run through all the different networks around Japan. Um, 
they go you, you can travel anywhere that's right. Shinkansen. content so from the very base of japan all the way up to the north into yeah, hokkaido so this particular one um travels from tokyo to uh osaka i think and it's probably one of the most busy lines because people actually commute back and forth across there for daily meetings for work and also for travel that's right yeah it's a take long at all it's only a few hours it's good really really fast mm. so these are what are commonly referred to as bullet trains that's right that's right yeah. yes and so this is a full set right this, this is, can with everything if you want we can open it up and have we a look definitely everything, open it up. Yeah. everything should be should be able uh visible for us to see they always do really nice packaging with their sets let's pop the top view so, so. Yeah. well um we got get that open and then i'll just slide this the box on top out all right thanks guys so you go that way help. and i hold it here <laughs> all right. excellent all right thank you well, there's a decent amount of stuff in there yeah actually i might spin this around so it's a bit easier to sleep there we go so this has everything you'd need to get started yep so you have your power pack yep you have all of your track and this makes like a basic oval setup yep uh, power cords you got your australian standard adapter um uh, carlos japanese everything right. is made in japan yep so it's very high quality they're pretty well regarded for their quality uh the unit track which is great because that we've talked about this a few times before but it really just snaps together yeah, it's great if you don't have a permanent layout and you just pull it apart. You guys have this ballast, this plastic ballast space, which is very nice as well. Mm. And then here's your locomotive, your Shinkansen locomotive itself. Got good length, hasn't it? You got two carriages yeah. and, uh, and, and two be... locos. So one, one's a dummy, I'm guessing. Yes. Yeah. It'll have to be, yeah. Well, the power, the power, um, is actually in one of these carriages. Oh, so really? So both, both of those are dummies. these are what they call dummies. Yeah. So there's no yes. motor in these; they're just right. freewheeling. Yep. Um, but I believe one of these has the motor in it and it's oh. what actually propels the train. Right. So it really is, it almost reminds me of a duck. It's <laughs> it actually, got a very, it's nice. a very distinctive profile on the nose. So this particular train is the uh, Nozomi. So Nozomi is the fastest uh, line. So whenever you, you travel, you've got your choices. There might be three different trains you can choose. So this is the Express. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the Limited Express, which is a little bit slower. Yep. And then you've got the stopping all stations type one okay so this Which is, is the, really slow the but fastest of the fast it's fast yeah fast yeah. the fastest yeah. yeah yeah brilliant i was actually on one of these um when there was an earthquake um and i, I was just admiring how smooth it is because you'll, you'll have your beer sitting next to you and it's not moving at all you get your little lunchbox sitting there it's not moving at all and then suddenly the the whole train just stopped and everything just went flying i couldn't work out what it was and it was actually the um a little earthquake stopped it so they oh, stopped wow. all the trains on the line wow because they're traveling so fast they all stop uh they get it all checked out and then probably half an hour later i'm going go go away again i have to pick up my beer off the floor that's all good it's not like they're very prepared to deal with a situation like <laughs> that which is great yes. they're very efficient and organized with yes. the railways in japan yes. definitely I really, I really like this yeah i like this controller because it's got this real feel of a um real train driver yeah. kind of uh, yeah i like control. that yeah that's nice too no crossing. A little crossing. The throat crossing. Yeah. That's uh they call these a re-railer track because the uh, diamond shape actually will help guide uh like if a wheel comes off, it'll actually oh. help guide it back onto the track. Yes. Yeah, very clever. It also makes it easy. They also give you one of these um little units to help yes. you get things on the track. Oh, so re nice. Yeah. Well, you can see how it's similar to that. It's, it okay. has that diamond shape. Yes. Because a lot of people have difficulty getting such tiny wheels onto the track. Yes. It's hard to align it. Yeah. Yeah. So once once you get good at that, you've graduated from Model Railway University. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Really looks like the inside of a the real train controller. That's it. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. That's a great starter set. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Beautiful. So big restock of Kato. So we've got the basic truck again, a few sets, yeah. which is really good, and, and the tram set. That's it. So which will be quite nice to uh, pull out maybe next week or so once. Once we start it, what it does, what it doesn't do, and yeah. if the plugger comes back, then you can have a, a drive there. Plugger, if you're watching, come back. We miss you. We miss you, definitely. So, very good. All right, guys. All right. Well, Thanks, everybody. Thank you for the demonstration. Uh, do yeah, we have any that. questions? No, I think we addressed the question a moment ago, so we should be good. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great Easter weekend.
Thanks, cool. Marlon. Thank you, Marlon. So while Brett gets ready, yes, we have some really good guests on this call. Oh, have we? Are they good? So Tony right. suggests that, well, yep. actually, Flank Amber asked me for the Lancho, who's not a Lancho. It's not a Lancho. Tony suggests it's a Porsche, which is, is a Porsche. And then yes. Peter, he suggests he needs a Porsche 936. Yep. Uh, Joke and mess. Here we go. Let me put it out. And uh, I think you need to get a magnifier, but I think we're probably okay. What year is it, uh, Peter? Let's see if you can tell us the year. Uh -huh. Well, the name sounds good, right? Because I'm going to see the small little little flag, uh, flag for him, right? Yeah. So it's a German flag. <laughs> here it. Here oh, we go. All of that. There's someone coming here. No, oh, we've got an animal on its way. Is that it? I can't let read that. Let, let me let me have a look. Can't focus on it. No, Hello. no, I think it, uh, it may not be the driver because that's a lot longer. <laughs> I can't read what it is, but it's longer than uh, most. Oh, tiny. I can barely read anything. Oh. So Tony is asking for X. No, Tony, I can't read it, but it will be a please. I don't know. Ten letters. What Jackie X? What's oh, it's a German driver? Sorry, is is Jackie German? So maybe we the the. the there's no description, so this is. So let's see what year it is. Let's see if anyone can guess the year of, of this car. Nobody's guessed it yet, hey. No, the year no, but we have the model and yep. very close. Oh, so, what about we haven't got the sponsorship yet? The sponsorship is missing yep, in the, the year. Team. So, yep. Oh really? Yes. Which uh, shouldn't be that hard because I think it's actually, beaming straight at you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brett, come in. All right, what do you got there? What do you got there? Brett, Brett from the receive. All right, let's make some room. His favorite car. I know another Maybe. one. Another one to the collection of what Brett gets to take home. Yes, really? <laughs> Another one of your favorites. Not quite. Oh, wow. Well. The, the Look at it. That's right. Wow. How cool is this? Pretty good. So the last we year, haven't had one since last year, nah. have we? And we did a bit of a hot up project. And That's right. That was we fun. We did a little bit of fun with that and then it just walked out the door. And so we thought that we were going to be able to keep it and play with it, and, but I just. Oh, we just yeah. finished it and it was sold. It so, was my private collection, but and it didn't end up that way, unfortunately. Know, we so, tried to build something unsellable and that didn't work. No, it was right. actually too good. Yes. So so now what's the plan with this? Yeah. We're going to unbox it. We're going to unbox it for a start. start. So see what's inside. So let's have a look. Yep, so this is it. a yeah. Traxxas TRX6. Now yep. let's, let's have a look at what you're getting. Now just be careful because last time you I unboxed something, something, I nearly oh, broke the radio. Yeah. Is there a transmitter in yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. All right, so now this is out. the AMG G63 6x6, oh, isn't it? You're going to make the honor of putting out the Ready? car, eh? Da, 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 da. Oh, oh, it's Ooh, a white edition too. Oh, yeah, here we go, here we go. Oh, no. Look at this. Hello. Oh, look at it. That is fantastic. Oh, as much as I want to tear all the wrapping and everything off, we better had not do that. No, this could be no. going to a home other than other than mine. So this is lovely. This is the uh, Traxxas TRX six. Season isn't it? it? Six by six. Um, so yeah, six wheel drive, six wheel diff locking, uh, front to rear diff locking, uh, two speed transmission, isn't yes. it? So you can crawl up. Uh, obviously. Being a crawler, and you can kick it into second gear, and speed you can get definitely, definitely good speed actually. Yeah, with three S powered, it definitely is pretty pretty fast. It's and faster than it should have any right to be. And if you put brush the system, it's a little rocket. <laughs> a little rocket. You can probably jump it. <laughs> but so, if you're alive, um, I've seen some videos on YouTube of this car being jumped on the dunes. Really? Desert. Yeah. Yeah. Please, really? Yeah, uh, definitely. I don't the, know. The the model and the real one. Really? Yeah. Yeah, really soft tires too. It's really impressive. Well, I suppose I have to be to really get the grip on the, the terrain that it's got. So let's take the body off and let's have a look. Okay. So now you notice a little wire hanging off under there. Yes. We're gonna we're gonna light this bad boy up. So this yeah. one has factory fitted tracks of lights so on it, doesn't it? So Jump on the top camera so, so you guys can see. I'll put this down out the way. So the traditional TRX4 finishes roughly here. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. So the front part is virtually identical to a TRX4. Yeah. And then they did the extension, so they've done all the molding on the um, mat guards here. On the rear act, then yeah. they extended the rear chassis and part. Extended rear. Mm. Obviously modeled on the real car. That's yep. right. Um, and they could utilize a lot of the, the rear parts of That's the four-wheel right. drive already. Some parts are unique to this car, though, aren't they? Like it's got the um, that, that center drive shaft out That's of the right. here. This is going to be unique to this model because yep. that's where so from here back is all new yep um, from, middle, from, yep from from here forward yes it 
from from here forward is all going to be run of the mill trx4 and that's this nothing to be here. sneezed at yeah and this part here is all new and different so being uh, having an expert diff has got another diff lock yeah that's right yeah so you can you can three-way diff lock on this one yeah uh, this one's currently locked locked everything's locked together on this one so front rear left right is all locked up but when yep. we power it up we'll um play with it we'll have a play with it <laughs> so we've got detailed exhaust on this model which is a really nice touch bling bling and also yeah. the um skid plate, plate. Yeah. 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 yeah yeah that's quite nice the front as well oh yeah and it's designed to fit the body uh really really well actually it fits yeah. around the body perfectly so and it looks really nice scale it, right. it, they've done a really good job so i thought we'd power it up so i brought in with me a nine steps 2s battery now keep in mind as well that this will take 3s straight off That's with right. these electronics so similar electronics to the other gear that they run it's probably the 3s haven't you yeah yeah absolutely and? that was good <laughs> <laughs> and we just we, do it we try brushless as well 3s which is yep. even even better right so we've got the um traxxas um battery mount system here which is unique to to traxxas and common across a lot of their vehicles so yeah. you can use very clever you can use multiple different size batteries and configurations in here obviously 2s 3s various capacities soft pack hard pack yeah. as long as you've got a traxxas connector on there yeah. we should be um right to go now before we go any further we're going to have to power up the transmitter because that is brand new you got some batteries oh, got yes. some batteries all right so and this should be as simple as putting four double a's in yeah are you always having your pocket for a little bit oh uh, well, wow. everything is powered by double A's, right? That's right. You never know when you need them. <laughs> Here we go. Look at this. So, all right. Back on the top camera. Yep. Back on the top camera. Now we'll switch this one on here. Yep. <clears throat> We've got the green light on here. We yep. should be uh, ready to go. All right. So, if I give this a bit of a kick, I'll hold it down a bit. Oh. Oh, Here we go. go. It's alive. And we like. are we are crawling. So, so you're gonna, you're you lift the front to lift the rear. Yeah. Let's go front camera so again. You can see here. Oh, it's actually driving. It is. Six wheel driving. Now, if I kick that into second gear while it's moving nice and slow, yeah. you'll see how the speed increases. You're really here to click, aren't you? Yeah. It. It's quite a solid mechanical thud. So, yeah. Yeah. Server. And then. If we go back over to the top cameras, that's it. Yep. We can have a look at these are the diff locking servos. Yeah. So we've got one. That way they're they'll all be oh, open. Okay. So if we lift it up again and spin the wheels, we can see here how all the all, all the diffs are open and independent yep. for maximum uh, maneuverability, I suppose you could yep. say, and yep. drivability. Then if we go to the middle position, only the front is locked. Only the front is locked. So that's going to help in, in yep. traction but still get maneuverability yep and then we can go that way and then they're all all, all locked up all six wheels are locked together i'm used to saying right. four all six wheels are locked <laughs> together so and this can also this transmitter can also be used with the the tqi uh link module in the back oh it makes things a bit easier yeah yeah well you can then get the app on your phone yep. and you can really tune and, and control all the settings of the servos yep. um the motor a bit of data logging i think that's right yep. um and that sort of thing so i suppose now we've got it on um and we've got it alive let's yep. put the uh let's put body. the body back on and the lights and yeah, let's, see, let's see the some some light this action this is the star of the show it's actually quite a, quite a classy little little setup on this it's a little bit finicky to get in oh that's bright. Lights are on. You'll see it quite. You'll see it quite bright and predominant, which is nice. Being LED, they should be water, water friendly. Can I get it on? I can't see. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's in. Here All we right. go. Have a look at that. Spin that around. Probably oh, we can't see in the full lights. What if I? Right. How's that? No, nah. no, nah, we really can't see. So we've got it too well so, lit up in here. I see. Oh, look at that. Okay. Yep. That works. So we've got headlights, clearance lights, we've got roof lights. And, and also tail lights. You've got the tail lights. Okay. So they've done a pretty good, they've That's done cool. a really good job. It's a really good feature. 
um, that the standard defender, the 4x4 defender, does it come with? Yes. Um, it does come with a bit of a premium of a price tag over the 4x4, but it is a lot more vehicle. Um, it's just cool. I don't know. Like these are the ones that are really cool. They're so bright, these tiny ones here. Super bright. Yeah. Yeah. So Traxxas have smashed it out of the park again. Mm. There's something really nice to play with, given some crawler guys. It appeals to the crawler guys because it's quite capable. That's right. It uh, appeals to the scale guys because it's mm. it's good looking and quite scale. And it yep. appeals to those that want to play with RC stuff because it's with, um, fun to play with. With the second mm. axle of the rear, it's actually really capable of climbing quite steep yeah. uh, climbs because mm. the second axle will help it from tipping over. From tipping yep. backwards because it's so, so much longer. That's right. So so we'll, uh, it'll be quite quite uh, quite capable, even though it's quite heavy. It's uh, it's going to be a. Really it's never fun. really bothered the crawlers too much, though, has it? No, no, probably not. And some stability, yeah. That's yeah. right. Well, luckily, we've got good trading deals at the moment on on blue Defender Utes. Yes. And I, <laughs> I think <laughs> old I think old blue might be coming in yeah. for a changeover. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> come for a trade in. Let's see if we can get the deals. So, take second ends. So that is the tracks is four by uh, six. Four, the tracks six by six hmm. AMG sixty three. Hmm. Good. What a what an awesome car! Bit of an yeah. unboxing. Um, all we gotta do is play with it more, I suppose. I yeah, so too. cool. I Fantastic. So too. Nice. I'll get this down and away without dropping it. Yes. So we're almost towards the end today because we're gonna have another live in the next few minutes. In the next yeah, hour or so. We're gonna yes. park this here because we're gonna have a guest. We're gonna have an international uh, racing RC on road racing superstar, if you will, in the show. Yes. Mr. Yes. Nicholas Lee. Yes, from uh, a world world Yokomo team driver. Yes, um, yeah, he's so he's going to talk to us about the new model, um, and yeah, a bit of insights about racing and fun and, and that sort yeah. of thing. So that's really yeah, good. Exactly. That's going to be. Okay, um, we touched on Kilo last week. Did we, did we talk about Kilo? Yes. Yeah, and yes. how uh, Yokomo effectively dominated most yes. of their standing sheets at the end of the day, which is really good. So, and how our, our resident racing guru, uh, Nick. Come in seventh, didn't you? An open oh, stop. Yes. That's pretty good. That Otherwise, it's for really SF2. Good fun. Thank you to Simon who actually prepared my car. <laughs> Lucky really for me. The... I, had a, I had a truck for Saturday and then was it for SF2 for uh, Sunday? Which yeah. Was really good fun. Really enjoyed that. So, brilliant really event. Good. And the Yoko was it for and was it too did extremely well. So yeah, yeah. I think they run both the pro and modified yeah. mm. and, and stock. And stock, stock so, yeah. yeah. Which is no, they're the best countries. Not only in Victoria, but in Australia. Yeah, so it, uh, very good, uh, very good, successful event, showing that the cars actually, you know, come to to good level now. There was another event, wasn't it, in Canberra? There was another event in Canberra. An off-road one, very much right. Yes, yeah. an eight-scale off-road one. Yeah. And yes. there we had the whole body dominating. Yes. yes. Event. So mm. yes, uh, Sam, Sam, Sam Savage, Zach Sam Ryan, Savage, Ben, Zach Panic. Ryan, ben mm. Panic, Craig Lawton, Craig Lawton, Craig Lawton. Yes. yes. All came towards a pointy end, if not. That's right. If not so we had uh, Craig one. Yes, yep. Craig one. Yeah. Butler second on X three, I think. Yeah. And then third was was it a Zach Oban? And then fourth was it a Zach Oban? I don't remember. The <laughs> yeah, one of them. And so uh, really, really good, uh, really good uh, uh, result there too. Mm -hmm. It was really good for hot bodies. The eight one nine RS, which you've been building. Yes. Well, actually, yes. Really the electric version, but it's yeah, pretty much the same version. platform. So we'll, <clears throat> this week's been more about the BD10 and getting that yes. up and firing, yep. ready for our guest today. Yes. Next week we'll probably jump back onto the E819 RS to get that ready. ready. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so this coming Saturday we'll be heading out to our local uh, eight scale gas track out at Lillardale and yep. running the the GT. Hot Bodies GTE8. Mm. Um, running that around for for uh, a bit of fun and try and try and boost the numbers and just just have some fun. Hmm. playing with rc stuff it's just practice day so yeah so yeah really good brains really good stuff brilliant to talk maybe about. we should talk about the velodrome it's still it's still coming up it's, it's a fair way it's off sneaking but up isn't it it's mm. gonna come up very, sneaking up. Very, very quick we're, we're penciled in for the fourth of september is that right something uh, like that 24 anyway anyway so september anyway get ready <laughs> get ready we're gonna get have ready to, has to start getting some stuff ready mm. brilliant so yeah. 4 p.m today we can have the live with yep. uh, Nicholas Lee from yes. Yakima, and he's going to talk about BD10 2021 yep. versus the BD10 2020. That's yep. right. So this was built this week hmm. by Joe, isn't Master it? Joe Master Joe, Joe built this one for us really quickly uh, to have the car ready for today's live. So hmm. yep. we're going to we're gonna talk about this. 
just today. So last thing we so need what? for today, we need to finish up with this car, which are very close. Oh, yes. So well, still, unfortunately, my eyes are still too bad. I can't. Now, I, can't I don't think we're gonna. It. I'm gonna guess the name there. But the year we have. Right, I here. cannot read that. No, not even close. You need your special goggles on, beach. Come on, on. So the goggles. goggles. <laughs> no, yeah. no, I don't think. No chance. Don't tip it upside down. So, I, I, I think we have a suggestion. Is a Le Mans 1981. And it's oh, very oh, close. So very close. close. So. A few years away, so we just need that, and then we can actually show what this, what the car is. <laughs> can put it ready here. Let's put it ready here. Yep. For the reveal. Da, 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 da. Let's see if you can get next ten seconds the guess of what yeah maybe. It's a fabulous looking car, isn't it? The red really pops. Yes, it's, it's really bright. And this is the the long tail. Yeah, mm. continuation of the long tail. I like yes. all the long tails. It's yeah. so good. So no guesses yet. I think we better hand it to them. I we beat them once. I think once this time we have it. So, all right. I think we're going to jump on a top camera and reveal that this is what is this? Porsche, Porsche 936 mm -hmm. 1978. That's yes, it. and That's that was it. the Le Mans entry. Yeah, for that year. Twenty-four hours um, event. And I, I don't know. I don't know the race results. Martini team. So. It looks like it won, but they I don't were, know. They were prevalent. It looks they? like a winner. Been prevalent in the uh, the sponsorship game yep. for a long time. Definitely, they so, had great looking cars. Yep. Just from looks, I reckon it's a winner. There we go. Very good because sure always that's not going to hang around. Somebody will snap that up very quickly. I like the mirror so. in the back too. Yes. What do you mean? Under the, under the tail. Yeah. So you can have a look at the reflection underneath. Oh yeah. Let's see if you can. That before. So done here, guys. There is a mirror. So you can actually see the details, the engine details. There's actually a lot of engine detail. Yes. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So you can, that is shame. Yeah, it's probably impossible to see you in the camera. No, you can see a little, so a little exhaust there too. Yeah. That is beautiful. That's it. And so this is 118 scale resin. Yep. As you can see, the, the detail that is an antenna as well here. I really like the wheels. The wheels are phenomenal. They've got the vented, the vented yes. edges. Yes. Yeah, they're really going for... Um, Aerodynamics, then, won't they? Absolutely. I mean, they still do now, but they're just they're all over it. So Tony suggests that is Pescarola, which, if you look carefully, um, because it, all it is actually all we can see is a squiggly line and it's quite so long. The, yeah, it could be. <laughs> I, I, th I think Tony, you may take the win here. Give Tony the win. We give get Tony the win. I think it could be Pescarola. It's long enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Very, very good. All right. Like all right. It. Well, well, I think it's time to wrap it up for I another think so. week. We're going to have yeah. a half an hour break and then we'll be up again at 4 p.m. Yep. <laughs> Three of us talking about Yakumo and Touring Car Racing. So it's going to be fantastic. Cool. Everyone, thank Thanks you for, for watching, watching, guys. And uh, we will see you uh, in an hour or yep. next Friday, actually. That's right. So yeah. This Either week way. is Thursday because tomorrow is holiday, but we'll be yes. back next Friday. So we certainly will. Thank Bye. you for watching. Bye-bye. Thanks, Thanks for coming.